The reviews that I filmed on portable podcast mixers and sound cards clear back when I started my channel a few years ago are still some of the most popular videos that I have put out. Today I'm taking a look at another one, it's been a long time, an all-in-one portable podcast sound card and mixer that comes with everything you need including a microphone to get started creating digital content right away. Let's take a look at it. What's up everybody, welcome to the Face Reviews YouTube channel. My name is Jordan, if you're new here, thank you for joining me, and if you're a subscriber, welcome back as always. Today on the review table, I have the Comica Adcaster C1-K1. This is a very thin and lightweight sound card that still offers 48 kilohertz, 24-bit sample rate, an included XLR microphone, phantom power, samples, and a whole lot more. We're gonna dive into the unboxing, but before we do that, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell, and leave a comment so that you don't miss future videos coming down the pipeline. But let's dive into the unboxing. I'll overlay the unboxing video that I filmed on top of this as I show you what comes in the package. There are a lot of accessories inside. The first thing you're gonna see when you crack it open is gonna be, of course, your user manual. And there's a couple of them here. We've got one for the actual uh, Adcaster itself that goes over all the different features. We have one uh, that's a quick start guide for the Adcaster. And then we have a microphone, uh, which they call the STA-X2S. That's the microphone user manual. They also include like, a warranty card, a little QR code to reach their customer service, and then a couple of these. These are little templates that you can place on the buttons of the Adcaster to let you know what your samples are. They label the different samples, and you'll see that up close in just a moment. You're also going to get the microphone itself. I have mine assembled. This attaches to the shock mount. You can add the pop filter as well as the vertical uh, stand and the round weighted base. This is enough that if your desk is at a comfortable typing height that you can adjust this to a good speaking distance where it's uh, you know six inches from your mouth at the appropriate level. Everything here is pretty robust constru uh, construction. This is a metal base plate, uh, plastic on the shock mount, but everything feels really, really solid. The microphone itself, um, is mostly metal with this plastic collar around the edge. Now, there are a ton of different cables in here. The one you're gonna use the most is going to be your XLR to 1 8 inch tip ring sleeve cable. This is what you're gonna plug into the mic one input on the mixer. They also include, uh, let's see, we've got a USB-C to dual XLR. This can actually support up to four microphones and two of them will plug in through this same input right here if you wanna go that route. They have uh, a few of these tip ring ring sleeve to tip ring ring sleeve that just means uh, you've got the three little metal rings on the plug-in jack. This is like a headphone cable. This is gonna allow you to stream out to different devices like phones or computers or tablets. We've got a USB-A to USB-C cable that can be used for powering or charging the device. It does have a built-in battery. And then we also have this multi-function USB-C to USB-C with an adapter cable. This is gonna be your data cable to plug into your computer so that you can live stream and use this as a sound card on your laptop or PC or MacBook or what have you. So that's what comes in the box. Let's flip the camera overhead and talk about all the different functions and give you a demo of this in action. Now that the unboxing is out of the way and we've looked at everything that comes in the box with the Adcaster C1 K1, I wanna walk you through all of the different inputs and outputs. I've got it set up right here on my desk in probably the most basic and straightforward way that you can. I have my microphone that's included in the box connected to the microphone one input right here and I have a USB running to my computer to record this audio. And what I'm gonna do actually while I talk through this portion so that you can hear as much audio out of this as you can is switch the audio from the camera, which you're hearing right now over to the microphone which is right here so I'm gonna do that in one two three switch and now you're hearing the audio from the Comica C1 K1 now let's walk through the different inputs and outputs we'll start on the side of the unit this one over here you're gonna see at the top we have our USB this is your connection to your computer for your recording and your monitoring and uh, streaming anything like that if you want to use a USB this is gonna be the one that you use we have a little switch right here off and on this is for your Bluetooth I've got my phone connected right now which you'll hear in just a moment we have our main power button right here which you hold to turn the unit on and off and we have our monitoring output right here so you can listen to what you're recording in the headphones. On this side, we have an XLR 1 and 2 USB-C. So there is a cable that would convert USB-C to two additional XLR inputs if you want to have up to four microphones in this unit. I'm not doing that right now, but it is an option. We have a tiny little reset button right there. We have a USB-C for charging, so that's the third USB-C. That one is just to power up the battery if you want to use this on the go. 
And then we have our second monitoring output right here on the side. On the back, we have a bunch of 3.5 millimeter or eighth inch inputs and outputs. These two right here are for your main microphones. We have an aux output to send to, or excuse me, to send in music from a external device like an MP3 player or a CD player. We have a speaker output if you've got studio monitors. We have an output one and output two. These are gonna be line level tip ring ring sleeve cables that you can use to stream on an iPad, an iPhone, or some sort of laptop. Uh, it doesn't have to be Andro or Apple, it could be Android as well, but these are just gonna be output so that multiple devices can stream at once. Now, tipping the unit back down, let me center that again. Let's talk about the different uh, components of the layout. I'll zoom this in just a touch right now. Like I said, I've got this set up in a pretty basic mode, just one input and one output to the computer. We'll start in the center of the unit. This button right here is your master volume or your master output and your master headphone monitoring volume. So right now the little LED next to out is lit. And so if I turn this up and down, this will adjust our output uh, signal to the computer or to whatever device you are streaming or recording on. If I click that once, it switches over to the headphone icon and now I'm adjusting the level of the headphones in my ears. You can see that I've got level monitoring for each of those, the microphone one and the headphone so that you know where you're at. Above that, we have input one and input two gain. So this is just the gain of the microphone for each level. Now I'm gonna be honest, I really don't like these buttons. I'm gonna turn it down a bit and then I'm gonna turn it back up a bit. And the problem that I have with these is that these are infinite scroll buttons. They don't have a stop. So these little indicators on them don't really do much. They're there just for show. These will just keep spinning indefinitely. You can see the levels adjusting here when you do it. Uh, but that's really my biggest gripe with this unit is that these don't have a stopping point, which surprisingly the aux uh, knob does. So this is the knob for the Bluetooth music or for whatever you've got coming into the aux port in the back. They're both controlled by the same knob. And this one does have like a hard stop at the max and the min. I wish these had that as well, but that's just one of the downsides. Uh, at the very top, you're gonna see my level meters. We already discussed those. You have separate level monitoring for input one and input two, and you also have uh, monitoring for your headphones. To the left and the right, we have different uh, things that will illuminate based on what EQ setting you have, what reverb setting you have, what FX setting you have. And then on the right, we have an indicator saying that our Bluetooth is on, that we have three out of four battery power. And really this is just gonna kind of keep you in the know of how the unit is doing. Now, I can walk through a few of these settings in just a moment, but, but first I wanted to go down to the bottom of the uh, Adcaster and we've got a few different settings and effects that we can turn on here. Denoise, which is supposed to remove a lot of the room noise. Usually this is at the uh, expense of quality. Now I'm gonna kind of like tap on the table. That's with the denoise on. Let's say like I'm on my computer and then I turn that off. And you know, I'm in a pretty quiet insulated room right now, um, but that should reduce ambient noise if you're in a loud environment. Loopback is a button that when enabled will allow you to record the audio from your USB device. So if you have music playing in a browser or something on your PC and you want it to be recorded into the Adcaster, you would uh, select that option. Duck is an option where let's say if we've got some music playing, so I'm gonna utilize the Bluetooth right now. I'll turn some music on and bring the level up here. All right, so let me get some music. All right, and if I hit the duck button, what that should do is when I'm speaking, that should lower the volume of the music, and when I stop speaking, the music should come back up. And then the last button on the right is the mute button. If I click that, it should silence all the microphone input. And then when I unclick it, my voice comes back. At the bottom, we have some pre-loaded effects. They do include these little uh, covers here that tell you what each button does. There also is a custom button to record your own audio. So if I click applause, we've got laughter, <laughs> cheering, awkward, and funny. And then for the custom sample button right here, you can actually record right through the microphone or record audio if you've got loopback active from your computer. But I'm just gonna hold this till we enter recording mode. And now I'm recording a 10 second or up to 10 second sample of my voice. Click one time to stop the recording. Now to play it back, we'll just hit that button. And now I'm recording a 10 second or up to 10 second sample of my voice. Click one time to stop the recording.
And there you go. Last thing I wanted to do is circle back to the effects up here at the top. So we've got different EQ settings that you can choose. Um, so this is the deep EQ setting. You're going to get some uh, emphasized low end. This is the nature EQ setting. Check one, two, check one, two. And they're not that sensitive of buttons. Let me try and... Maybe I'm not hitting it. Oh, there we go. Got to use my pointer finger. This is the bright EQ setting. And then clicking it one more time disengages the EQ. Next, we've got some reverb options. We've got a room reverb right here. Hitting that again. We're going to get your stage reverb. And then hitting that one more time will take us to the hall reverb. Check one, two. This is the hall reverb. And last but not least, it wouldn't be one of these affordable podcast sound cards without a few built-in effects. So if we click this, we've got auto-tune right here. Ooh. And then we've got our female voice changer and we've got our male voice changer right here then we can go over the uh, robot voice changer and the, the monster voice changer these are going to be these are going to be fun for kids to play with but probably not of much utility if you are a serious podcaster now Hopefully you're getting an idea of how this unit sounds. Again, I'm in a pretty ideal environment in my basement with a lot of insulation and very low echo and reverb in this room. So there's not really a lot of ambient noise. It's very insulated down here. But depending on your environment, this may or may not be optimal. You'll have to play with the denoise setting. But you know, for a all-in-one package out the door, everything you need, very simple setup like you see here, two cables, I can't really complain about it too much. The quality is much better than you're going to get out of your earbuds or out of uh, your computer's built-in microphone. So if you're just starting out, this is a great springboard to launching your own content, be it YouTube, a podcast, or some video game streaming. So there you have it. That is the Comica Adcaster C1-K1. Super lightweight, super portable, but surprisingly good sound quality. The construction feels nice. A few gripes with it, including those infinite scroll input wheels, and, uh, you know, overall, just generally middle of the road construction quality. Um, at the end of the day though, this is a fantastic entry into podcasting or content creation. I think the starting uh, budding content creator is going to have a blast with this thing. And when you're ready to step up, you know, and spend two, three, four times as much, you could do so. But for those that are just getting into things, this is a great jumping off point. If you want to grab one for yourself, I'll include a link down in the description below. You can go buy through there and support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. If you're not going to pick up one of these today, no worries. Just like the video, leave a comment, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss any videos coming down the pipeline. That's going to be it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.